Standing, well, hovering I guess, alongside the legendary dragons of D&D are creatures known as Beholders. These Beholders, or as I like to call them, the Big Angry Eyes, are one of the most feared in all of Dungeons & Dragons. You may remember them for their modeling work done on Xanathar's Guide to Everything and the Monster Manual for 5th edition. Beholders are floating aberrations with a large central eye surrounded by multiple eye stalks, each with their own unique magical ability. Think like a floating cyclops head with Medusa hair, only the hair is eyes instead of snakes and you got yourself a beholder. Now that might be a weird picture, but there's a lot more to a beholder than its simple dashing good looks. Beholders are incredibly intelligent creatures, one because they have a thirst for knowledge and learning, and two because, well I mean, look it, it's a giant floating head, how much or how big of a brain do you think could fit in that thing? But no matter how high their IQ, beholders are known for one specific personality trait, being that they have two. Their brain is actually split up into two separate entities. These entities each share the same brain and body, meaning that within a beholder there are technically two creatures even though in reality there is technically only one beholder. But even still, each of these entities has their own unique thoughts, ideals, personalities, and more. Due to this, oftentimes it may seem like beholders are talking to themselves, but in reality, they are simply conversing with their other persona, and because of this, beholders have the reputation of being completely insane as well as being incredibly paranoid. For example, one personality may be hell-bent on knowledge and enslaving all other lesser races, while the other one might just have an unhealthy obsession with tube socks. Oh, yeah. And yes, even though beholders are incredibly dangerous creatures, many D&D players find this trait endearing. I mean, sure, they are the literal poster child for a face only a mother could love, but these guys are all unstable little balls of anxiety, and I think my entire generation can probably relate with that. According to the Monster Manual, Beholders are lawful evil, but that doesn't really mean anything because Beholders are literally batshit insane. Some just want to be left alone with their sock collection, while others drive themselves more insane by actively thinking of contingency plans for when the Mole Men attack. But even though their minds are at odds with each other, and they are absolutely bonkers, Beholders are incredibly proud creatures, and as such, they have a very unique view on the world. And part of this unique view encompasses their interests. For example, every beholder has a trophy gallery in their lair where they can look at and admire all of their treasure. Some of this treasure may be things that their servants have brought back from adventures and others may be mementos taken from creatures that the beholder has conquered. And while each beholder does have a slight bit of a klepto problem, each and every beholder is a special little snowflake that collect different types of trophies. When I made the tube socks joke, I really wasn't lying. Some beholders collect things like gems and art and others collect, well, the socks of their enemies. Now, this can vary greatly depending upon the personality of the Beholder, but part of their insanity is their value placed on strange objects. <laughs> one Beholder might just have an interest in socks, while another one might really like to collect goblin ears. It's entirely up in the air what a Beholder might like to collect. And to go alongside their unique interests, they also have other wonderful personality traits such as being incredibly racist and paranoid assholes. Now, to give some context to this, Beholders tend to hold themselves in high regard. They are incredibly dangerous and powerful creatures, but they also know this themselves. And even though no two beholders are the same, they are incredibly prideful and often view themselves as the epitome of beholder kind. But because of this, beholders also rarely get along with other beholder kin. They take all of this and essentially enslave other lesser races to worship them in a godlike fashion, feeding their egomania and view other beholders as threats. But egomania isn't exactly rare for powerful creatures in D&D. Honestly, it's kind of common. No, where the beholders really stand out from the rest of the crowd is just how insane these guys actually are. To highlight this, beholders are always incredibly stressed out and find threats in the most benign of things. They often link two completely unrelated occurrences together and create a random string of overthought nonsense that would make anxious millennials like me feel normal. This anxious and paranoid behavior is a core trait within any Beholder's personality. A Beholder could logically conclude that a rock falling in the distance and a rat squeaking means he's being scried on by a lich. And I know that's a big jump, but the crazy part isn't the giant jump from insanity to logical, it's that regardless of the conclusion that it makes, the Beholder always has a countermeasure planned for nearly any and all possibility as it has prepared for literally all possibilities meaning that the entire time that the Beholder is alive, he is in a constant state of anxiety, trying to figure out any and all possible ways he could die, and then spending any time not thinking about how he could die, creating countermeasures to deal with any and all threats, no matter how improbable or impractical they may be. 
but to be fair, Beholders are rightfully paranoid, seeming as how they can literally create their own worst enemy. While Beholders sleep, their mind is still in a constant state of awareness, meaning that they often dream and have nightmares. When a Beholder dreams of another Beholder, there is a chance that that Beholder can literally think this dream into existence. And this is how Beholders are created. But oftentimes, when a Beholder is birthed via a nightmare, the Beholders don't see an eye to eye and end up fighting to the death. Using a mixture of their eye beams and their anti magic cone from their central eye, it would be the most deadly staring contest ever. So, if you ever find yourself face to face with a Beholder, be sure to bow, give them whatever he wants, and then quickly get the hell out of there, unless you want to be turned into a new trophy statue in his living room. And that's a Beholder. If you liked this video, I would really appreciate it if you subscribed and let me know what you'd like to see next featured on Legend Lore. Believe it or not, this video took arguably the most time editing out of anything I've put out to date, and I would really appreciate the feedback. And if you haven't already, be sure to check out our livestream campaign every Friday at 7pm EST. Thank you all very much for watching, and we'll see you on Friday.